Hi there, not made a wi uh, video, a video? Uh, video for a while, probably because I can't speak properly. Um, but thought it would be really cool if um, maybe had a, a quick look at all the vintage watches in the collection. Um, I seem to have gone, gone in that direction lately. I uh, seem to be more and more attracted to the vintage stuff and also the affordable vintage stuff as well. It doesn't have to be the crazy type stuff that's out there at the moment. So just thought I'd have a, we could have a quick look at, at what I've got. Um, thought you might be interested. Um, first of all, looking at first three chronographs that I've got, you've probably seen this one before. Um, this is the Aviva Avia Marino. Um, I presume this is uh, 60s. Um, I think it is late 60s. It's also rated at 20 ATM, obviously being a vintage uh, uh, watch, you wouldn't risk it, but um, it's, a, it's a lovely uh, hand-wound um, Landeron movement, I believe. And it's got a really, really uh, nice look on the dial. I mean, it has patinaed slightly, um, but it's got that really silvery, greeny type look to it. Um, case looks in good condition. Um, really, really nice um, diving chronograph, I guess you'd call it. Had that one quite a while uh, now. Friend of this, a friend of mine picked this up for me in a, a dealer in uh, Harrogate, would you believe? He called me and <laughs> sent me a photo. I said, yeah, get it, get it. I love it. Um, so you do you do occasionally see these around, but um, really really nice looking uh, vintage watch. Next one up is quite a recent purchase. Um, probably like myself, you really really do love the uh, the old sixties seventies Hoyer chronographs, but they're absolutely crazy prices. Um, whereas you, I'm sure that the, the, a lot of companies share dials and. Um, cases and i think this would be the case here as well um this is a um, a lip lip geneve um absolutely gorgeous um dial um got the two counters there um it's also got the applied indices as have uh, got a gold tone to them and the hands as well so it really really makes it uh makes the dial pop you can just see there the uh, the lip or the uh, logo on the back. Um, put this on a on a B&R bands leather strap. And I said the case is beautiful. Um, I did notice actually that there's a slight difference you can see there between the pushes. So at some stage, I think one of these pushes was replaced, and it's not with exactly. Um, the same part um that's something that could always be sorted but to be honest with you it's so uh so unnoticeable i, I don't know if i'll bother but uh, it's a hand wound uh, movement as well i think it's a value 7730 okay love that that's beautiful 30 about 36 millimeters in width the next up is a hoyer it's the only probably the only vintage hoyer i can afford these are still relatively reasonable considering uh what other Ortavias are like uh, price-wise. Um, so I've had this a couple of years now, I think. So this is the uh, the Ortavia 1663, I believe. Um, this is the Viceroy version. So this is the one that you could get um, with the Viceroy cigarette promotion in 1972. I think it was 1972. So you send off an empty packet of ciggies and uh, Viceroy ciggies and you could get this for $85, would you believe? But the, the case on it is really nice and crisp and sharp. Um, the dial, when I first got it, there was a couple of um, loom um, markers missing, um, but my uh, the watchmaker I use is, is very good at relooms and he replaces you, you can't tell the difference, other than actually if you look really, 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 really close, he did a better job than what the originals are, uh, uh, the way they were placed, but uh, but yeah, the, um, the loom tone as well matches, it's really, really nice. As I said, it's probably about the only Hoyer chronograph I'd be prepared to shout out for when you think of the uh, the silly money for the other stuff. Okay. Next up is a very, very cheap Seiko that I got off a market stall, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. I've got a feeling it's probably 70s. Um, I could check that out, I guess, better with the, uh, with the model number. Um, there's no Seiko. It's not a Seiko 5 in the Seiko 5 range as far as I can tell without the Seiko 5 logo. Um, but uh, beautiful, 
beautiful uh, looking watch. Um, I think it was £50 or something like that. This is crazy, really crazy. Next up is another Seiko. This is a Seiko Seahorse. I think this is 60s. Again, it may have strayed into the 70s. I'll have to do a bit more research. You can see the, uh, the Seahorse logo on the back there. Pretty cool. It's a date model. Um, and this isn't hand wine. This is um, do the Seiko shuffle to get this one going. And you can see the seahorse um, name on there. Beautiful. And then an absolute, one of my favourites is another Seiko. This is the Seiko Lord Marvel uh, with the Arabic numerals. This is absolutely stunning watch. Really very lucky to find this. This is absolutely brilliant condition. Usually the dials, um, you get, um, um, you know, water damage, etc. on it. But this is absolutely stunning. Um, it's a high beat, 36,000 beats per hour. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous looking watch. Um, the case sharp, um, the engraving's nice, and the dial is to die for. I absolutely love this. This is, uh, I think this is about 34 mil. So it's quite a small watch, but I am into the smaller um, vintage dress watches anyway. We've got a six and three quarter inch wrist, so this fits quite nicely. But that's an absolute stunner. This is hand wound. Give it a bit more. Let's see, really down. And there she goes. Just going to pause for a second. Okay, back again. Sorry for that pause. Dog needed to come out. <laughs> but uh, like, yes, you can see it's a really smooth uh, sweep of the second hand there, with it being a with it being a high beat movement. I could stare at that all day. Anyway, get moving on. And uh, another Seiko. I think I've shown this one before, and this is the um, the six one zero five eight one one nine. Um, made famous by Apocalypse Now and Martin Sheen wearing this, so it's sometimes known as the Captain Willard. Um, really, really great. Untouched, other than uh, I've had it serviced, so it's got new seals uh, on the crown and uh, on the case back, and it's had a new crystal fitted. But what, one of the, uh, the one of the crystals that um, that is, a, is a, an exact replica of, of what it should be. Um, as you can see, there's some. Uh, the dial hasn't been really touched at all, so. The, the loom on the hands have, have, uh, have turned a bit uh, a bit of a, a dark green there. And you can see, um, I believe they used to use um, a salt um, element to the uh, to the loom paint, which you get a bit of blackness to over the years. But I like it. I think it looks bloody great, you know, and it's got, I don't mind the scratches on the, uh, on the bezel insert as well. It's the original uh, bezel insert. It's... Uh, water resistant and there's the crown as well the original lock logo on it and moving on um, vintage on a bracelet and on the original bracelet as well um, these are a really cool brand Atlantic um, you can pick up Atlantic watches really pretty reasonably um, and I, they do some really great jazzy type um, um, dials as you can see, this has got a bit of a what you'd call a, I guess, a UFO type shape case. Mm -hmm. It's got a blue seconds hand, which is quite uh, quite neat. Um, but a great looking dial and really reasonable on the second on the on the vintage market. With the case back, as you can see, it's the original Atlantic bracelet. It's really super cool. So they're really, really pretty reasonable. And I think Atlantic did a whole range, World Master, Time Masters. Um, they'd be make a pretty good uh, collection, actually, of just Atlantic watches. You could, uh, you could have quite a lot of fun with that. Okay, moving on. It's another stunning um, bracelet, original bracelet on this Belova Accutron. So this has got the battery, this is the, the tuning fork movement so you can hear actually hear it humming away when you hold it up to your ear 
absolutely stunning condition this this was sold as new old stock and you never know whether it's going to be the case or not but it did arrive it wasn't in a box but it arrived in tissue paper and it was absolutely immaculate um obviously it's not <laughs> i couldn't class it as new old stock now because i wear it i'm not going to leave it wrapped up in a box but as you can see the dial is fantastic this is 34 millimeters the dark the actual dial the case size and the and, and the bracelet are very very similar to some of the amiga um, seamasters that i've seen at the same time it does make you wonder again whether they were swapping or whether they were sharing uh, supplies of certain things. As you can see the uh, Belova logo on there. That's an absolute beautiful watch. And my only um, Accutron or my um, tuning fork. Movement. And moving on, we've got one here which is uh, the Benrus. Um, I, forgot, I think it's 3601, but this is obviously their civilian version of the military watches they made at the time in the 60s. Um, this one here, um, made famous by Steve McQueen in the film Bullet, as he wore one of these in that movie, I believe. Um, and you can see the red tips of the second hand. Um, and this is why it's known as the Ben Russ Bullet. Um, as you can see, the dial here has faded quite a lot, actually, but it's still got loads of character. It's um, The case is in, is in pretty good shape. Um, I have seen a lot where the, where, the, where the dial is in a lot better condition, but it, it seems to have a ni nice character to it. Uh, that's actually a 33, so it, it, is, it is a very small watch, but it does wear okay. And moving on to next to my only vintage Zenith. Um, again, a hand wound with a small seconds dial. This one has what you've got what you call plenty of patina, but nothing like uh, that looks like damage. It does look like original. I mean, um, not original. Um, the kind of patina that you'd like. It's got a nice golden yellow across the whole dial. Again, this has got gold colours indices. On the, I've actually, this is the strap that came on the, the, the Lip Geneve. Um, it's one of those Stingray straps. Um, but I, I swapped it off. I think it looks pretty good on this, on this Zenith. Again, this is the kind of shape, style of watch, a 60s type dress watch that I seem to really be uh, going for at the moment. Again, you know, case back is pretty good shape with all the engraving in place. That's a really, really smart watch. And in the same kind of vein, these again, which are really good value for money, um, are, are the vintage Docs address watches. This is stunning. The condition of this is fantastic. Uh, again, this wasn't very expensive at all. Um, you can find them out there. Um, when you consider, you know, the price of some vintage pieces out there. And this is, again, is, I believe this is solid. Uh, yeah, I think it's a solid stainless steel case. Great engraving on the back. Um, absolutely love this on a, on a, a crocodile strap. Um, when you think how much if you wanted to get a Calatrava or something, uh, a Patek or something like that, which would cost you an arm and a leg, yeah, you can achieve pretty much that same look with a nice vintage piece for a lot, lot less. Again, it's got that n a nice small second, sub-second dial. Finally, um, actually, this is probably one of my favourites, and it's not a big, big make. It's not a big, uh, well-known make. It's Gruen. Um, I believe again, this is sixties. But just look at that dial and the case shape. It's absolutely beautiful, and the dial. It's got that texture to it, and also the markers. I think they call them either lozenge shape or coffin style markers and the hands is the thing that's patinaed so I believe those were like a green loom before and they've gone to like a what's been described as a pumpkin orange and it, I just absolutely love this watch it's only 34 millimeters but absolutely love the love the look of this and I do wear it a lot beautiful thing absolutely beautiful Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that quick look. Sorry for the pause halfway through. Um, 
but I just thought it'd be worthwhile just getting all the vintage stuff that I've got together now. Um, so I seem to be going more in that direction. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the uh, look and, and any comments below, that'd be really cool to see. Thanks very much.